What is up everyone and welcome to another Smash Ultimate Guide video. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys all about a technique that Sephiroth can use called snap locking. So first off, what is snap locking? And snap locking is basically using Sephiroth's side B to jab lock on a platform or on a platform or on the stage. So I can show it to you right here. Um, it works. Uh, obviously the percents are different for different characters, but this should work with DK at 50%. So what you want to do is you're going to down throw and you can jab lock him with side B and that is basically a snap lock. Obviously uh, there are many different things you can do out of the snap lock. For example, you can do a snap lock into a continued, continued jab lock like I will show right here. And you can see that if you miss the platform by a certain distance that you won't have the ability to do the snap lock. But I will down throw here, you can continue the jab lock and do stuff like that. Uh, obviously there are many different follow ups that Sephiroth has off of the jab lock down, off of the jab lock for example, you could just do a smash attack, a tilt attack, a jab attack, anything. Um, but the, the benefit of the snap lock is that it adds special pressure as you can get the uh, side B to float around them which means that now they're, being, they're going to be jab locked and put on the defensive. So something that I found really useful for from it is that you can actually do jab lock, you can just get two side B's for free. Obviously you'll be put in disadvantage, but you have now the two floating balls that will cause them to be under pressure for a certain amount of time. You can also, if your opponent does not tech from the ground, you can do a jab lock that balls through the stage, like similar to that, I messed it up a little bit. but um. These are very, very situational, obviously. You're going to have to get your opponent in a very good position so you can push them off like that and continue the jab lock like that. Um, there are many different things that you can do this. Obviously, when you do the uh, platform fall jab lock, um, they will be jab lock, the, it'll be a jab lock reset. So you'll push them off and then you can hit them with two again. And obviously, there are different follow ups off of that. Um, but yeah, snap locking can be used in many different ways. For example, if there was a top platform up here, could you, you could do, I've seen some people do, um, they'll up throw, and at certain percents, it will send them into a situation where they're forced to tech on the top platform up here, and if they don't tech that, you can do a snap lock, land on the platform, and then you can jab lock them up high, and since they will be having that pressure of the ball sending them around them, you can use your decently strong up tilt to send them high in the air, where it will eventually kill them off the top with the side B. Um, these can be used in multiple different scenarios, as he can snap lock on all the different platforms. As you can see here, as the percents get higher, obviously I have no way to snap lock him because he is too high to be uh, set into tech positions. Uh, if say your opponent just um, misses the tech, you can also snap lock. You can also jab lock them or snap lock them with side B just on the ground if they miss a tech. And this can happen sometimes when your opponent is on the ground and you spare at higher percents when it has bigger knockback, or when you use um, back air. Um, another thing that you can use, and this isn't related to snap locking, but if they do have a tech chase potential. You can um, use uh, up B to jab lock them after the snap lock. So, say you want to use a snap lock. So, I'm going to get DK um, onto this platform here. I'm going to snap lock him and then we'll up B him. Uh, you can see that it isn't true, but it does send your opponent into a situation where they are going to be forced to do a certain option. And there is one, I like to use this setup a lot more. Uh, what you're going to do is you don't commit to the platform, you kind of um, do the snap lock under it and it does require a precise timing because you don't want to land on the platform. You're just going to do that and then you have to be a certain amount of distance. Like if you're, if DK is over here and this is probably even worse for smaller opponents and you're over here and since they have, they're going to be low pro profiling, since they are going to be on the ground in a tech scenario, um, you're going to want to be able to act actually hit the um, side B. So I'm going to try to do a snap block like this. And if you can get it in a certain percent, obviously, depending on the character, see here, if he's in a snap block percent, I'm going to side B him uh, at a certain distance. Oops, messed up. 
I'm going to side B him at a certain distance, a certain height, and he'll be in the tech scenario. And then you can up smash, and as you can see, up smash will cover the entire platform, which means roll in, neutral get up, uh, roll out, any options that your opponent chooses will be covered by um, uh, the up smash. So there are many different setups, obviously, that you can do, like I said earlier with the snap lock. But uh, this is more advanced tech, a very situational tech that you might not always be using. But I would still say is a very useful tech for those scenarios where you do get this hex scenario. And it does give you a free side view, which is one of his best moves. So yeah, I would definitely recommend using it. But that's going to be all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe down below. We're really getting, we're getting close to 300 subscribers. And if we could hit that by first week of January that'd be great uh, but thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video